Texas's longest serving governor is making his way back into the daily grind at the state capitol. KXN's Ryan Chandler joins us now to tell us what's going on with Rick Perry. And no, he's not running for governor again, right? No, <laughs> although he could. We have no he term could, limits yeah. in Texas. Maybe <laughs> he right. wants to get back in the saddle. Um, but he will have a very important role in the capitol. Rick Perry, of course, not only the longest serving governor, He's a former state legislator, lieutenant governor, and agriculture commissioner. So this is a guy that really knows the Capitol inside and out. And mm. he's joining the Speaker's office at a politically fraught time for Dade Phelan. Mm. Of course, we know there is a lot of tension between the House and the Senate. And, and Phelan is in the fight of his political life to hold on to his gavel as Speaker against three challengers. So th this addition to his team is a, a forceful message to the rest of his members, I think that uh, he's not going anywhere. He is the Speaker of the House and he's bringing in an all-star team to make sure that he stays that way. When you speak of people who aren't necessarily fans of him right now, you mentioned Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick who uh, tweeted the other day that he considered him to be a rhino rad, which I had <laughs> heard rhino before, but I'd never heard rhino rad, which stands for Republican in name only really a Democrat. That's what the right. Lieutenant Governor is calling feeling. So the, the, uh, the word out there uh, amongst his distractors is that Phelan is not conservative enough. So when you bring in a guy like former Governor Perry, who's a staunch Republican, right. a staunch uh, conservative, that would seem like that might be a smart move to bolster his standing. Is that what you think is behind this? Yeah, exactly. In fact, I just came from a panel with Rick Perry um, at the Texas Tribune Festival, and he was elaborating a little bit on why he wants to join the Speaker's office. Uh, not only because uh, Phelan is a conservative that maybe doesn't get the credit for being a conservative from, from fellow Republicans. There's a lot of people to his right that thought the last session wasn't quite conservative enough. But, but also, even more important than that, Phelan is a conservative that knows how to work with Democrats and, in fact, invites cooperation and bipartisanship in the House. Perry said that that's a value that he really uh, appreciates and wants to continue. Of course, there's been a long fight to get rid of Democratic chairmanships in the House. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Phelan has preserved that, and by all accounts, he, he will continue to do so if he, if he is Speaker again. And uh, Perry... I think will be an ally in order to preserve the old school style of governing where it may be contentious, but it is bipartisan and cooperative at the end of the day. So I think it, I was reading in my research that uh, this position that Perry is taking on as an advisor is just kind of temporary until Phelan right. and if Phelan secures the, uh, the speakership. Um, what, what, what does an advisor do? You know, what's he going to be doing for Phelan? Just giving him advice, I yeah, guess? I, I think that's kind of a catch-all yeah. uh, title. Uh, my understanding is that Perry isn't even being compensated for this. You know, oh. he, he's picked a few pet projects that follow his passions in his retirement post-governorship. Uh, this, I think, um, is a, 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 an effort that he thinks is important. Mm -hmm. He helped Phelan campaign a little bit to provide a little bit of star power. Uh, a little bit of classic conservative credentials to, to Phelan. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, I think the Capitol is taking note of this, is uh, remembering that Phelan is the speaker and he's not going to give up the gavel that easily. And he, Perry is just the latest member of his team that he's brought in to um, probably try and counter a little bit of a sense that he's being outgunned by mm -hmm. Lieutenant Governor Patrick and all his money and even Donald Trump who endorsed his opponent in the primary which he won by this much. Yeah and as you said he's in a battle for it. He's got three other fellows who want to have that speakership so right. he could use that olive branch maybe to the Lieutenant Governor. It'll exactly. be interesting to see how that turns out because you talk about the um, the bipartisanship which is kind of out of fashion nowadays. It used to be that's what you aimed for right. but it's not so much here on the state level or even the national level anymore. No look I mean the last legislative session was by all accounts the most conservative in history. The session before that was the second most conservative in history. Uh, under Dade Phelan, we've passed things like the abortion ban, permitless carry, um, you know, uh, bans on, on transition surgery for minors, very red meat, uh, important issues to conservatives. And yet there are people like Donald Trump, like Dan Patrick, who identified items that were left on the table last session and think the, the House can be even more conservative. So it'll be interesting to see how much of a role Democrats really have or if they're just completely shut out, which they probably will be if Phelan is not speaker. Ryan Chandler, thanks again for your insight. I appreciate it. Thank you.